So, what is the significance of IRNSS for our strategic missiles? See, today all the missile systems practically are using GPS heading across the world okay, to improve their accuracy. But there is always a lingering doubt in your minds that at critical time it can be withdrawn, whether it is GPS or GLONASS or anything. That is the critical issue for the IRNSS, that it is your own system, at least it will not be denied to you at any time. Second, it is positioned vitally to cover the India and its strategic influence zone around it. That is the second best part of it, it is always available to you. Third is, you can strengthen the signals the way you want. Yeah. So, today the only system in the S band, yeah. all others are L band. So, your antennas can be smaller, your many other advantages are there. Mm -hmm. Then, but there is a lot of work to be done on this. We have to create a ground receiver segment for IRNSS, which should design really rugged systems which are anti jam, jammable, which are capable of being used in hostile environments, which are do not have spoofing, yeah. cannot be spoofed. So, you are we have to have a precision code like GPS has hmm. dual frequency precision code of sufficient length to deny enemy so. breaking of that code. So, there are many features which need have to be integrated and which will be integrated into IRNSS to make it a very robust, very rugged system. Mm -hmm. And if when that comes, you need it is a potential huge market. I was yes. talking to the other day because June is the first launch mm -hmm. under the Astronautical Society of India. We had a yes meeting on the IRNSS other day. So mm -hmm. I was telling them that India has a potential of 40,000, 50,000 to 1 lakh receivers mm -hmm. because every special action soldier will have to carry one. Yes. Every artillery gun has to carry one every mobile vehicle operating tomorrow you are going to have UAVs, unmanned soldiers, yes, anti mine, yes, yes. mine laying vehicles, and mine removal vehicles, they are practically innumerable op requirements for high precision rugged GPS receivers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when you have your own IRNSS system, you are confident that you, the investment you are making in this segment mm -hmm. is not going to be denied at any yes. time. So mm -hmm. that's the, and when we talk of this uh, uh, strategic missiles, uh, recently we had two trials of K-15 successful trials and uh, as the media reports say, we also have a project called K K-4. So, uh, since it is now in public domain, there is nothing, I do not think there is any need for hiding it. So, what is the uh, time frame for testing the K-4 uh, underwater missile? will come through in due course. I do not think we have fixed up a time frame okay. as yet. Okay. So, but then see in any systems this is an evolutionary process. We have developed K 15 naturally there will be higher ranges which will be coming up like it has happened in the land, land systems. But the time frame for that is an evolving time frame. So, we will see. And there is also a need to uh, develop nano or micro satellites because in a hostile uh, condition, your satellites may get damaged and countries have now in place systems where they can at short notice launch many small um, uh, satellites to replace the damaged ones. So, do we also have any program like that? If you will take any strategic missiles, like any class of missiles. Sir it can be launched at a few minutes notice. Few minutes notice? Against any target, anywhere, any time, 24 hours, okay, from anywhere. Now, that capability, if we integrate, 
with a pre prepared satellite okay. of specific use. We have offered and we are confident of we can create a launch on demand capability where you can launch on a few less hours notice. No, but that, that will be one satellite or a group of uh, small satellites? It depends on what type of satellite you are carrying. But depends for on that the weight of to, the satellite. But for that you need but to many have… many sats, yes. Okay. Micro sats, several. Okay. Okay. So, that program capability again exists. But that capability will come once you test successfully your MI, RB capability no, no, or no, with it the has existing… No, no, nothing to do with MI. Okay. Okay. Today, whatever we have developed for Agni 5 with some modifications of the staging, we can you put a 200 kg payload okay. into orbit, low earth orbit. Okay. Okay. That is the launch on demand capability, what we call. So, missiles provide you that opportunity to create a launch on demand capability. And you are right, I think it is an essential capability which the nation needs to develop and keep it ready. Also, nation also needs to have a relook at in case as you are saying one of the satellites is destroyed, at least certain minimum essential capabilities should be restored at a short notice, may not be full, but some crucial may be one transponder, may be three transponders, I should be able to put in quickly. So, that capability of small satellites being re put in orbit at a very short notice is a national requirement which I am repeatedly pushing that we must create and I think it will sooner or later it will happen. Entire nation because now it is when everybody talks about threat perception and threat from different corners for the country one name obviously comes up and everybody knows about it. If we compare our capability in space with our adversary, the main adversary in space, where do we stand? Uh, particularly the uh, people want to know, are we prepared to take any challenge from any corner? First of all, we have no adversaries in space. Okay. okay. As a or country, any threat from on, on but space? We have to be ready to protect ourselves from any threat. And today the only way to protect your assets and space is to have adequate deterrence. To be able to damage in retaliation whatever and that capability exists. Yes. Exists. So, we need not to be afraid of any threat to our assets yes. on ground. We have to be prepared, but we need not be afraid. Okay. Thank you. And finally, sir, what are the other uh, missile projects, important missile projects you are working on, which are, which you may call it futuristic uh, programs in missile? In last two years, three years, uh, prior to that I was looking only at Agni, but in last two years, we are identified several niche capabilities which need to be created. One of them is that we must have long range surface to air missiles. Long range surface to air uh, missiles, extra long range of the range of 300, 200 to 300 kilometers. That is one gap because today the weapon standoff distances are increasing quite fast. Yes, sir. If we want to keep our vital sets alive against air attack, we have to make sure that we have missiles of this range. These missiles will have multiple roles, they can be used in against anti-missile, they can be used in anti-aircraft, they can be used in anti-cruise missiles and various others. So, that is one area where we have identified a very immediate activity. That will be Akash Mark 2 or something you may call it? It is not Akash, it is going to be new okay. series all okay. together, a new capability, mm -hmm. but totally based on what our proven capabilities, Sir. like our propulsion techniques, what we have developed in Akash, like that. It will use proven modular approach, but it will be a totally new configuration, because Akash is 25 kilometers. Yeah. We are talking of 200 to 300 kilometers. 
So, there is a total scale difference. So, at what stage is this project is now? So, this project is now design okay. is going on mm -hmm. and once we are confident of a design, we will be putting up to the government for a okay. proposal. Mm -hmm. Another area where we are looking for which needs has been a thrust area is the submarine launched yeah. systems that is another very vital area, yes, sir. where we feel the nirbhay cruise missile, what we are doing, it can have multiple roles, it can be launched from aircraft, it can be launched from ship, it can be launched from ground, it can be launched from submarines. So, that is our my second thrust area is how to develop nirbhay to its full potential of being capable of launching from multiple. When you talk of launching nirbhay from a aircraft, what type of aircraft? A transporter or a fighter? No, it can be launched from a fighter aircraft, Sukhoi fighter. type of thing. Yes. So, Brahmos and Nirbhai can be launched complementary to yes. each other. Okay. So, that is possible. Next area in the missiles is we need to develop, as I was telling, the high performance, high end anti tank missiles. Yes, sir. That is one. But even more critical is a supersonic cruise missile, where capabilities of Brahmos okay. can be exploited as a country, we have to You have supersonic uh, missile of 300 longer to, so range, you are talking yes. of longer range. I am talking of longer range. Okay. Okay. That will be different from Brahmos entirely. No, not necessarily. Why should I make a difference when Brahmos is there, why not expand that capability? So, where are you going to get the engine for that? So, that is where we have to see how to work together. Okay. With Russia, with the help of Russia? With the help of Russia or with the help of our own indigenous technologies. Okay. See, the situations do not stay same. Yes, sir. Okay. True. Absolutely. So, what was that Brahmos when we started 97, 15 years yes, are sir. over now. So, things have to change. Okay. We are also working on the futuristic hypersonic capability. Yes. That is longer range? Longer ranges. That will be see, to make a cruise vehicle at 30, 40 kilometers height able to do Mark 6, okay. that class of systems. So, okay. that will be different from the uh, Brahmos hypersonic? That is totally different. Totally that, different. Is total, okay. that is still at a very nascent technology okay. state. We are going to do an experimental test in about a year. Uh, now, DRDO. Okay. DRDO. Hypersonic cruise missile? Hypersonic uh, cruise vehicle. First is a hypersonic cruise vehicle to okay. prove a technology. And then it will develop into the okay. cruise vehicle, which can be a transporter, which can be a weapon so carrier. What type which of can propulsion a, system you are using? It has a scramjet propulsion. Uh, made of? Uh, it is scramjet, which uses a liquid kerosene for fuel. Yeah, yeah. No, this, this scramjet engine is developed here in India. In India, India. Uh, we yeah. have the capability. Yes, yes, we have developed and ground tested an engine up to for about 20, 30 seconds. Okay. Continuous running. It? That is done at DRDL, Hyderabad. Okay. Okay. Recently? No, no, engine was tested about a year back. Okay. Now, we are working for test, full configuration test of the engine and then go for the flight. Just like Americans just did some X yes, or X something. Yes, yeah. exactly same. Okay. Realize that class of system. Yes. So, we are going to be among the first. This will be a big breakthrough in this region. Big, yes. Another area where we are working strongly is the SRCM and quick reaction surface to air missiles. Okay. Shorter ranges, but very fast reaction mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and very fast. This thing. Where we are helping our users, as you said sometime back, that DRDO development and user needs how to make them into. Yeah. So, as the user procures, we also give him an equivalent good solution. Okay. Then there are few other areas where we were having gaps. One is the smart weapon system, smart, smart, smart weapons, precision okay. guided munitions, mm -hmm. missile launched or aircraft launched. So, we have taken major steps in that area mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. So, we are now aim is my that in the missile field, DRDO should become a single window that people when they think of a missile, they should think first of DRDO, first of DRDO. then only look elsewhere. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much and wish you all the best for your future ventures. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.